Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. The month is filled with a majority of sweet, slow retrograde, but also dynamic cautionary celestial meetings and forward movements, making January a sort of electrifying month that forces you to rein in any restless impulses, to practice patience and spiritual self-reflection while you make preparations and trust your instincts for taking swift action. January sparks the flame of life and more (laughs) and encourages maturity calculated decisions, and calculated risks before brave movement, where it's off to the races once Mars, Mercury, and Uranus station direct. We begin the month with a bang. Venus meeting with Pluto and Capricorn, and Mercury, Mars, and Uranus all being retrograde, which is a recipe for restlessness and rage during a time of delays, pent-up energy, and potential misfires and miscommunications. Because it is also a lead up to the January 6th full moon in Cancer, where the Capricorn Sun will be conjunct Mercury retrograde, and where they will both oppose and illuminate the moon in Cancer while they both trine Uranus in Taurus, it explains things like extreme temperatures, and weather storms that are causing surprise massive flight cancellations, delays, and debt crises with big businesses like airlines and essential emergency response sectors with regards to the mass home damage, displacement, and even death. This particular configuration generally points to groups of people and collectives experiencing delays, surprises, interruptions, alerts with regards to short distance travel routes, daily routines, mail delivery, meetings or communications, and issues in your residence. Venus's activity during the three days before and after the full moon is also important. And in addition to the full moon astrology configurations, really helps explain the true mix of sweet, sour, exciting, and crisis energies one may have to navigate related to home, relationships, business, travel, communications, and finances this month. Venus meets up with Pluto in those last degrees of Capricorn on the first of the month. And on January 4th, just before the moon reaches full elimination, Venus enters Aquarius, maintaining a sextile with Jupiter and Aries the whole time, while it's also moving towards its trine with Mars retrograde in Gemini on the 9th, who has slowed down and prepped to go direct. So this is dynamic energy that is happening all at once. And it could point to government bailout funds for airlines, compensations for travelers, and generally governments being forced to find financial and operational solutions for global crises. Venus's movement from conjuncting Pluto and Capricorn to moving into Aquarius also generally suggests transformations in relationship alliances, love, finance, and leadership on a global, political, macro scale, and in personal circumstances. It could indicate dramatic, scandalous, or tragic conclusions or events in these areas. Particularly, I'm getting committed love and business relationships that contained conflict, toxicity, financial manipulation, violence, and vengeance. I'm seeing this transit as one that initiates a lot of people fleeing violence and toxicity and finding personal power, the appearance of new faded and better suited relationships and support networks in such matters, and beginning new adventures filled with new levels of awareness, financial independence, and relationships. Given that Mercury retrograde is also forming a sextile to Neptune during this time. That's a little bit of like sweet respite, to be quite honest, or like a silver lining in the midst of a storm. 
So, like I mentioned, by the time we approach the full moon, there is this interesting mix of sweet, exciting, peaceful, but also crisis energy related to home, business, travel, communications, and finances. And then Venus makes its trine with Mars retrograde in Gemini. Because of the specific way that home, relationship, and mercurial matters are being highlighted and activated so strongly by Uranus retrograde, Mars retrograde, Mercury retrograde, and Jupiter's dynamic, fiery, electric, and impulsive energies, where that energy is both pent up and triggered to combust, it also suggests a collective caution. Okay, and so the collective caution is to review and pay close attention to restless impulsiveness and your instincts related to navigating circuits and friction. That is the people you engage with, places that you visit, how you communicate, and home repair issues. For instance, the configurations foretell of a number of things that may transpire. It's possible to experience psychic insights and upper chakra activations during this time, getting great new ideas for matters. It's possible to be receiving shocking news and communications related to two things. People wanting to reignite flames in terms of engaging in chaos and in conflict or reignite love flames and resuscitate connections or where it's possible to have someone new take brave, passionate action towards you that they've been withholding or that may be overdue. This could be a time when you meet someone new or feel an urge or instinct to socialize with new connections or change up your routines and your usual travel routes or something, but where you perhaps also get some sort of delay or an instinct that something is off with a person, a location, or a plan. The direction is to go with your instincts and to do your research and to generally accept redirections and delays as protections during this time. It could help you avoid something disastrous or a conflict. While the astrology speaks to the external weather and natural disasters causing home issues, in general, the astrology is definitely an omen that some sort of home repair issue could come up. And it's advice to resolve any home repair problems with appliances, you know, put in your work orders and do all of that. I hope that this is not some sort of omen about an explosion, but this astrology could literally be homes, apartment buildings, and appliances being over flooded with electricity, mass circuit surcharges that create fires or energy outage, pipes bursting, fires and explosions, etc. Particularly if there was a long standing issue that was ignored or even overlooked in new construction right? This could also speak to some inventions or even laws being passed in your local environment um, or even in governments related to cleaner air, electricity, solar power, or things related to climate change. In general, the psychic intel that I received in addition to the fixed stars that are being illuminated with this Cancer full moon, emphasize these cautions. For example, this Cancer full moon is happening at 16 degrees. And so it is illuminated and positioned squarely between two fixed stars that both have cautions. For instance, there is a fixed star at 14 degrees of Cancer that is related to themes like voyages, journeys, um, also creativity, scandal, violence, um, changes, evil, and good, right? All of these things that I mentioned. And then also the one at 18 degrees, which is related to chemicals, poisons, gas, violence, destructiveness as a first principle, um, and 
prominent public affairs, right? So again, all of these things um, are in the midst and up for the astrology and have been like re-emphasized on a number of levels. The month is also a call to stillness amidst any chaos, beginning the month with, you know, a Cancer full moon that is conjunct Mercury retrograde, while Mars is also retrograde in Gemini. So again, the month is filled with that mixture of sweet and spiritual energy that really aids and encourages going inward, doing your organizing, planning, self-care and meditation to receive intellectual and intuitive creative inspiration and insights and to use that insight toward thoughtfully considering any impulses practicing patience and trying to find some ease while you problem solve and make preparations and trust your instincts for taking swift action based on calculated decisions calculated risks before brave movement and then taking that movement once Mars, Mercury, and Uranus station direct during the second half of the month. To be honest, I advise avoiding everything and everyone that is not an urgent matter until the second half of the month. Okay, so because it's a full moon, it also indicates bringing things to closure and completion. This is cosmic weather that suggests you may complete or get closure with something that provides a huge emotional relief and closure of a cycle for beginning a new one. It definitely could be receiving end of semester grades, prepping to file important paperwork with courts, travel agencies, and in general, reviewing contracts and completing administrative tasks, maybe prepping things that you will mail when Mercury goes direct on the 19th. In general, the Sabian mystical teaching relates to this. For example, I mentioned that Cancer full moon is happening at 16 degrees. The mystical sort of Sabian theme for the 16th degree of Cancer is a man sitting before a square with a manuscript roll before him. And this quite literally mapped onto how I imagined and pictured, right, the psychic and astrological insights I got about organizational and administrative bureaucratic things being on the docket. And like by the 19th, being prepared to go to town square with your long scroll of tasks, you know, to handle all of your official business. But it is also interpreted a different way. Um, some sources cite the Sabian mystical uh, theme and teaching for this degree as studying a mandala with the help of an ancient text for self-re-examination to reach self-understanding, integration, and a detailed plan before taking action. In either case, it all aligns, right, and relates to generally what the astrology talks about in terms of the sort of first half of the month being this time that is best used for re-examination and self-understanding and then once all of these sort of planets start to move forward taking action on your detailed plans so mars goes direct in gemini on the 12th Mercury then goes direct on the 19th, one week later. The sun enters Aquarius on the very next day. And then we have the Aquarius new moon at one degree on the 21st, where Uranus, the planetary ruler of Aquarius, then goes direct the next day on the 22nd. So this all really speaks of a massive energetic shift, bringing in newness and bringing in light energy and a sort of divine green light for handling your practical affairs and official business and being off to the races to bring things back to life. However, similar to the Gemini full moon last month and the Cancer full moon this month, this Aquarius new moon also features a polarity where on the one hand, the degree falls on fixed stars with cautionary messages about potential dangers, accidents, and combativeness. 
and then with corresponding mystical teachings that really emphasize nurturing one's growth, following your soul's calling, but embodying your higher self and exhibiting spiritual self-mastery while you do so. It's really important to carefully consider your words and self-mastery in communication. And this was a relevant message that came through for the Gemini full moon, given that it was conjunct Mars retrograde. Okay, I'll link the short video below. It may prove helpful and contain insight on navigating the tricky Mars and Gemini energy, which is still relevant in the mix of all of this astrology. But this notion of being off to the races with these forward movements carries significance and is encouraged, but truly highlights all the more while the spiritual teachings and spiritual integration are important. It's because truly these planetary forward movements also suggest a sort of releasing of pent up, powerful, excessive, dramatic, potentially cataclysmic and inflammatory and volatile fire and light energy. There is a sort of overarching message about there being a spiritual test in handling practical endeavors amidst what is a mix of opportunity, light energy, and patience, which could all breed volatility, conflict, friction, and inflammatory language from electric dynamics. Both fire and electricity are light energies, right? That can be used to spark innovation, insight, and take productive action while in excess, right? This energy can cause fires, destruction, and combustion, friction <laughs> that can be positively or negatively charged. This is particularly relevant because the new moon in Aquarius at one degree which holds that cautionary message, right, is conjunct Pluto while it's also sextile Jupiter in Aries, right after Mercury is direct and visible, while there's Venus conjunct Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus going direct in Taurus on the next day. So the new moon weekend really into the remainder of the month is all about taking actions based on those calculated decisions, calculated risks, taking care of finances and official business. With this astrology, you could receive news of new promotions. There could be successions and changes in leadership and institutions at this time, um, like educational institutions, medical institutions, government institutions, foreign affairs and businesses. I'm definitely getting that there could be surprise strategic oustings and even new partnerships and mentorships initiated during this time that are part of leadership decisions that are made with successions and legacies in mind. This could also be a time where there are new tax codes or laws um, being either discussed or even passed. Filing tax documents will be on the docket. Um, this could be a time where people are filing tax documents after entering into new tax brackets, filing government forms for new businesses or with foreign affairs related to travel like visas, and generally taking care of responsibilities after that time of careful consideration and recalibration. I see this astrology as also an omen that projects start it now or any business changes that are instituted now will prove a success and put you in a new tax bracket with some dedication. And in general, the last few days of the month offer sweet supportive transits for taking action on new inspired ideas and important conversations and for reinvigorating your connection with your mind, your heart, your body, and your spirit. For example, the month ends with Venus entering Pisces on the 27th, and then on the 30th, the Sun in Aquarius will trine Mars in Gemini, and Mercury in Capricorn will trine Uranus in Taurus. 
I suspect that there could be music releases, tour announcements, increased success or visionary ideas and changes in the beauty, wellness, tech, and even environmental industries and the economy. It's truly a dynamic time that reignites the flame of life. And Jupiter and Aries is the big transit in the background that really sort of personifies this and is truly facilitating divine realignment, dynamic deconstruction and reconstruction, and purification with force. The Jupiter and Aries transit will be opening divine doors of destiny, opportunity, and spiritual growth the next five months where the astrology of this month is an example. So if you found this video helpful, definitely click the link below to check out your personalized astrology and psychic tarot predictions for how Jupiter and Aries will be opening divine doors of destiny, opportunity, and spiritual growth for you the next five months according to your zodiac signs. You'll be able to see the collective insights on the celestial significance of the transit and click the timestamp to go directly to the zodiac sign of your choosing related to your rising sign, sun sign, north node, or any sign or house where you have stelliums. Given the dynamic <laughs> and sort of mixed bag of energies we have with this astrology, I pray that you all are held safely in the celestial light and grace of the divine during this time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and come back for more videos.